the thing about question period is sometimes there's different periods where it's very intense and there's lots of zingers, lots of, you know, viral moments and clips, so to speak, that come out of it. And other times it's very boring, it's very dry. And that's, to be honest, why politics is a big turnoff for a lot of people is because you tune in, you happen to catch a boring moment and, oh my God, it's the same thing. Repetition after repetition after repetition. And it's, it's just not interesting, but that's not what we're taking a look at today. In today's question period, you had Pierre and Trudeau's caucus leader day on Wednesdays and Pierre Poiliev absolutely obliterates Justin Trudeau. He even speaks to him like a baby and addresses everybody and looks directly in the camera. I think you're going to love this. You're going to stick around for the full video. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video, everybody. Before we get into it, I do want to encourage everyone to smash the like button and subscribe if you haven't yet already. It does really help grow the channel. Sit back, relax, and enjoy this question period moment. The Prime Minister has had a revelation. In an interview with the Halifax Chronicle Herald, he told how he responded to people asking for him to spend even more government money. And he said, and I quote, as soon as you do that, inflation goes up by exactly the same amount. Oh, right? Oh. Right. <laughs> I think of that. <laughs> Spending money you don't have actually causes inflation. In the middle of having epiphanies, has he also realized that budgets don't balance themselves? <laughs> Drop some dummies in the chat. Prime Minister. Speaker. That's good. The Conservative Party has been using that approach uh, about concerns on inflation to stand against things like national uh, food programs for kids or dental care for seniors. They have stood and objected against and even campaigned against dental care for seniors over the past many months. But we've delivered to over 100,000 seniors of the 2 million who've already registered for dental care the support that they hadn't gotten in years or even decades. But he stands against it with some uh, you know, made-up excuse around inflation when delivering <laughs> services delivers for Canadians. Oh, no. Pierre's coming back. He calls his own words a made-up excuse, Mr. Speaker. You can't wow. make this stuff up. He said that when people ask him, can you send us more benefits or send us an extra $1,000 a month? Well, he rep responds, as soon as you do that, inflation goes up by exactly the same go. amount. Oh, right? Oh, right. <laughs> right. right on. Holy shit. Speaker, that is exactly why the past years, we've been focused on bringing down inflation by supporting Canadians, and it is working. For the past four months, Mr. Speaker, inflation has been down in the Bank of Canada target range, while we continue to increase supports for Canadians, increase dental care for Canadians with Conservatives that campaigned against, supports for senior supports for young people, increased investments in child care, bringing child care fees down to $10 a day. These are the investments we're making that do not add to inflation, but add to Canadians' well-beings as they're making ends meet. That's what we stand for, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> Oh, man, this is going to come back really hard on him. He finally, for once, thought about monetary policy. <laughs> he said, as soon as you spend more, inflation goes up by exactly the same amount. Right. And he is right for once. But repeating the same costly promises that he has already broken does not change that fundamental monetary rule. So will the Prime Minister acknowledge that yes, the economy is about numbers, that people pay their rent in numbers, their gas in numbers, their groceries in numbers, and that the numbers are too high? Yeah, yeah. well said. The Right Honourable Prime Minister fundamental difference in perspective between the Conservatives and this Liberal government. The macroeconomic situation of Canada is one of the best in the G7, one of the best in the world. And the independent credit rating agencies continue to give us AAA scores. The federal government is doing well, but Canadians need support. So we are choosing to deliver supports to Canadians with this solid fiscal position. Dental care, a national food policy, national disability benefits, uh, help uh, for housing and investments in the kind of supports for Canadians that he 
has stood against every step of the way, Mr. Speaker. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Not a chance. That's what the President of the Residential Construction Council said when asked if this Prime Minister would keep his promise to build 3.9 million homes by 2031. So let's hear it from the Prime Minister. To, to reach that target, he'd have to build 550,000 homes per year. So yes or no, will the Prime Minister hit the target of 550,000 homes this year, yes or no? no. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Canada is facing a housing crisis and we need to take real action towards it, which is what we That you created, oh my goodness. Uh, He's in crazy plan, denial. Uh, ...that this country's ever seen. But, Mr. Speaker, that's not to say we haven't had housing crises before, and it's not to say we haven't solved housing crises before. At the end of World War II, there was a need for massive new housing, and Canada stepped up and got that housing built. Indeed, when the boomers came of age, there was a need for massive housing. Housing, and we made investments, and the federal government helped build housing across the country for boomers. We are doing that now as we build housing. The, the Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Well, that was a wonderful history lesson, except it didn't answer the question. <laughs> he promised he'd lower housing costs in 2015. He doubled them. Pierre. He promised he'd double home building. It actually went down and is still dropping. But now he's promising... 3.9 million brand new homes by 2031. That means he'd have to build 550,000 this year and every year. So once again, will the Prime Minister keep his promise to build 550,000 homes this year? Yes or no? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, the Leader opposite speaks of 2015. Well, we took office with a commitment to get this government back, the federal government back in the business of building housing. We launched a national housing strategy in 2017 that put two and a half million Canadians into new or refurbished homes, and we've continued to invest ever since. We're building homes on public lands. We're converting underused federal offices into homes. We're taxing vacant lands to incentivize construction. We're building apartments, bringing rents down with top-ups to the apartment construction loan program. We're scaling up modular housing. We're launching Canada Builds to lead a Team Canada effort to build more homes and more, Mr. Speaker. The question was not how quickly he could read off talking points written to, for him by his staff. The question was whether he's going to break yet another housing promise. Remember, he promised he'd lower housing costs, he doubled them. He promised he'd double the, the number of homes built, they went down. Now he's promising 3.9 million new homes by 2031. That means 550,000 new homes this and every year. Will... That's 1,500 homes per day. ...keep that promise. Yes or no? There's no way. That's 1,500 houses per day. That's Your economy would have to be banging. criticism is there's too many measures in our housing plan. Housing uh, should be solved by a simple, one-size-fits-all solution, according to the Leader of the Opposition. That's perhaps how he managed to build only six affordable homes when he was Minister of Housing. Because, yes, we have a broad range of initiatives that are delivering on housing, like topping up the Housing Accelerator Fund with four $400 million, a new $6 billion Canada Housing Infrastructure Fund to help communities build. We're leveraging transit funding to build more homes. We're launching a housing design catalog. We're incentivizing more skilled trade workers. The right honourable, sorry, the honourable leader of the opposition. He's announcing a catalog, everybody. <laughs>
question was, will he build 550,000 new homes, yes or no? Hey, let's get some W's in the chat. That was entertaining, making a mockery of the government. He mentioned the history lesson. Well, if he was housing minister, he should have known that the way we solved the housing crisis after World War II was by putting forward a catalog of homes that builders could access to build extremely rapidly right across the country. So yes, that's one of the measures we're bringing back. And his mockery of concrete initiatives that are going to deliver for Canadians is exactly what's wrong with his approach. He'd rather mock and insult than actually roll up his sleeves and get solutions built for Canadians. The Liberals can't even all stand up together in unison. <laughs> That's so pathetic. Order. He still didn't answer the question. That's crazy. The Honourable Member from London, Fanshawe. Report after report has shown that women who serve in the Canadian Armed Forces are not safe and consecutive governments have failed to act urgently. Shamefully, a new report revealed that 5% of women have been sexually attacked at their military colleges in the last 12 months. Justice Arbour was clear. Now is the time to end the toxic culture that exists within these colleges. Women deserve a safe place to train and to learn. When will the Prime Minister act to protect women who are the future generation of the Canadian Armed Forces. The right honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, we absolutely agree that the culture at the Royal Military College needs to change. That's why we took action. We appointed the Canadian Military College Review Board last year to enable meaningful culture change at these institutions. No RMC cadet and no CAF member should ever be subject to harassment, discrimination or misconduct. The Minister of National Defence will not hesitate to implement the necessary changes to protect cadets and all officers. Here, here. Smash the like button if you guys haven't yet. When I was housing minister, we built almost 200,000 houses and apartments, with the average rent being $973 for a one-bedroom apartment. But this prime minister is not worth the cost of housing, which has doubled uh, nine years after he and the NDP took power. Yep. What's he doing about it? He's giving half a billion dollars to the mayor of Toronto, who has just jacked up housing, home building taxes by 20%. Why does he reward local government gatekeepers that block the homes that Canadians need? Why does he reward failure? The right Honourable Prime Minister. It's the Liberal motto. We are leading on the efforts to solve this housing crisis with a <laughs> ambitious and concrete. Okay. Meanwhile, after having his housing bill panned by experts as being, quote, exceptionally weak response to the housing crisis riddled with loopholes, the Conservative leader chose to repeatedly delay debate in this House since October on his bill. That's because he just doesn't care. When he was minister, he lost 800,000 affordable apartments and only built six affordable homes. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Actually, the number is closer to 200,000, but the Prime Minister has never been very good with numbers, right? right. <laughs> uh, so the Prime Minister Brutal. cites the government-funded bureaucrats and liberal academics to bolster his approach, which has doubled housing costs in just nine years, partly because he gives money to municipalities and politicians like Winnipeg, where they just block 2,000 homes right next to a government-funded transit station built for those homes. Why won't he accept my common sense plan to give bonuses to those municipalities that permit more building and penalties to those that, that stand in the way? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, we criticized, rightly, the leader of the opposition who, when he was ca housing minister, only built six affordable homes for Canadians across the country. But it is understandable, Mr. Speaker, because he was part of a government that took the federal government out of the building of, of affordable housing. They chose that the federal government had nothing to do with housing across the country. That's why for 10 years of non-involvement of the federal government, uh, that leaves echoes. We've stepped up and invested in communities, invested in partnerships. We're getting the homes built. We're delivering for Canadians. 
The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Sure. Housing costs have doubled since he became Prime Minister. They were half when I was Housing Minister. Housing costs have run, have gone up 40 per cent faster than wages, a bigger gap than in any other G7 country. Why? Because he's building bureaucracy and not homes. Why won't he accept my common sense plan to require municipalities permit 15 per cent more building, sell off 6,000 federal uh, buildings to build homes, and cut taxes so builders can build? That sounds pretty good to me. The Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, just like when he was housing minister, his solution is to do less to help Canadians, to invest less in supporting municipalities as they build housing, to get out of the way and leave Canadians to fend for themselves. That is his political philosophy. It is a political philosophy. It's just not the one that supports Canadians. It's not the one that is delivering for Canadians as we step up with the most ambitious and achievable housing plan this country has ever seen. We will continue continue to be there to invest in housing accelerators. We will be there to continue to take the GST off of purpose-built apartments. We will be there for Canadians. Here, here. Talk about austerity. Well, I think that the Bransfield family of four in Calgary can tell him all about austerity because that's what they're living right now because of his housing hell his carbon taxes, and his inflation. They said, close, quote, we're having to choose between paying a bill or getting food, and that can be really hard. It makes things really difficult, and I just don't see an end in sight. Will the Prime Minister accept our common sense plan to axe the tax, fix the budget, build the homes, so that the Bransfield family and so many others can eat, heat, and house themselves? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, I disagree with the Leader of the Opposition. Of course you do. Away the Canada carbon rebate checks that arrive four times a year in the bank accounts of the Bransfield families. Indeed, eight out of ten Canadians, according to the Parliamentary Budget Officer, are better off with the Canada carbon rebate uh, as we fight uh, climate change with uh, the price on pollution. Eight out of 10 Canadian families from coast to coast in the jurisdictions where the carbon price applies are better off. That includes, most likely, the Bransfield family, uh, and we will continue to be there for them. The Honourable Member for Belay Chambly. Let's not be mistaken. I have the great respect for the state of Israel, and but things have to stop. With this in mind, is the Prime Minister uh, ready to support the ICG and the ICC to adhere to international law and help all peoples who could be subject to arrest on Canadian territory? And is he ready to apply the Canadian sanctions regime to Israelis? who openly commit crimes against humanity in the Gaza Strip. Uh, the the, right the RAFA thing. Mr. Speaker, Canada supports the independent work of the ICJ and the ICC. We are here to support the process and to ensure that everyone follows international law, including the rulings of these courts. We are here to support uh, processes uh, multilaterally to make sure that international law is adhered to. We are a country of rule of law, and we, can, we will remain so. And that's where we're going to end today's video, folks. On your way out, I'd like to encourage you guys one last time to smash the like button, subscribe if you haven't yet already. It does really help grow the channel, and I will see you all in the next one. Bye for now.